Hello my friends, how are you? This is me, Dr. Sergio Rovinsky from Shoulder Planet here from Sao Paulo, Brazil. In this video, I am presenting an unusual arthroscopy, which is the arthroscopic management of calcific tendonitis of the shoulder in those cases which present absolutely refractory or non-responding to any kind of conservative management. We know that uh, the vast majority of the cases of calcific tendonitis of the shoulder, they do indeed get better with a lot of non-operative measures. Physical therapy, injections in the subacromial space, um, even shockwave therapy and uh, so on. But nevertheless, just some cases, they really end up not uh, uh, having a response to any kind of conservative management. And in this sense, over time, once we infer the failure of non-operative management, the arthroscopic removal of the calcific deposits can be something very interesting. And in spite of being done quite not commonly, quite, quite not uh, usually, results can be wonderful as it was in this case. So uh, I hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, give us your like, and I hope you liked the video. So this case is about a 37-year-old woman who never had pain in her right shoulder. This is her history three years ago. She started to develop very intense and sudden pain in her right shoulder. She went to the doctor and she was told she had a calcific tendonitis in her right shoulder. And she started conservative treatment with physical therapy and non-steroid, any inflammatory medication. She really got better after three months with physical therapy and medication. But uh, in the next three years, she had five more episodes of intense pain and throughout that time in her x-ray we could see uh, classic deposits of calcium in Codman's area. And after three years of conservative treatment we came to the conclusion that that, was, that has, had failed and we indicated arthroscopy to remove all that calcium inside the tendon. And we know that an arthroscopic subacromial decompression is something controversial in literature in the treatment of calcific tendonitis, but in our opinion it should be done, and it was in that case. So now we have seen her x-ray uh, just taken two weeks before surgery. We can see very clear signs of calcific deposit in Codman's area. And now we have seen her MRI, uh, a coronal plane with uh, a very clear calcific deposit underneath the lateral part of the deltoid. This is another image on the axillary plane where we can see a very big calcific deposit in the anter anterior and lateral part of the subacromial space. And now we have seen a sagittal image and we can see that the calcific deposit was just underneath the anterolateral part of the deltoid muscle. So now we are starting to see her arthroscopy, right shoulder, a lot of synovitis, and a lot of bursal tissue, very inflammatory tissue. And we were taking that out with a lateral cautery. After that, we're starting to cut the coracochromial ligament. And this is the first part of the acromioplasty. We are releasing it from its acromial insertion. And after that, uh, the coracoacromial ligament was absolutely released from its acromial insertion, as we are seeing now, when at that time we started to perform very soft acromioplasty through the lateral portal. Uh, we performed a very smooth and soft acromioplasty, and now we can see the final, the final aspect of acromioplasty. At that time, we started to look to the tendon in order to find the calcific deposit. So we were palpating it with the probe, and using a spinal needle, we could easily find all the the calcific deposit. So once it was found, we started with uh, shaver to create the smallest window that we could in order to remove that calcium. So we entered through the lateral portal with a small curette. 
and we started to remove all that calcium outside of the tendon. And we really had to create a lesion in the tendon in order to remove all that calcium. Now we are using the shaver again. And at that time, we switched the portals. We are now watching for the lateral portal. And we created at that moment with a spinal needle a posterior lateral portal to help us to remove all those remaining calcium. So for the lateral portal, I mean for the posterior lateral portal, we entered with the small curette again, and we continued to remove all the calcific deposits. And now we switched the portals, and we are watching for the posterior lateral portal and working for the lateral portal, still removing all that calcium. And we used simple instruments, not only the small curette, but even a simple probe. And with a probe, we could remove the bigger pieces, and the biggest pieces were removed with simple hemostat, a simple kelly. And with the, the kelly, we could remove the biggest pieces. And at that time of the surgery, we wanted to be sure no calcium was left inside the tendon. So we entered it with radioscopy, as we are seeing now. So we entered it with radioscopy. Uh, and with radioscopy, we could see in the TV uh, that was the, the image. So we have seen the small curette, and we have seen the camera too, and no more calcium was left inside the tendon. Now we have seen the clinical setting uh, in the operative room, arthroscopy on the left and radioscopy on the right side. And after that, we have seen now the final, the final image in radioscopy, so we are seeing no more calcium inside the tendon. So at that time, we would just have to fix the small lesion that we had just created in order to remove all that calcium. So we are creating a bony bed in the great tuberosity with a blur. And once that was made, we would just have to put one single anchor. So we are creating a hole. And after that, we would just have to put the anchor. We used a 5.0 absorbable one, double loaded, as we are seeing now. So once the anchor was in the right place, we would just have to fix the tendon. So at that time, we switched the portals again, and we started looking for the lateral portal and working for the posterior portal. And with a single bird beak, we enter the posterior part of the tendon, and in a retrograde fashion, we pick it, the first suture, and pull it out of the shoulder through the posterior part of the tendon, as we are seeing now. And after that, we did the same, uh, the same thing again. We entered through the anterior portal, and with a bird beak too. We pass it that through the tendon, and in a retrograde fashion, we pick up the second suture, the blue one. And now we are picking the blue suture, and we are passing that, we're pulling that out of the shoulder through the tendon. So now both sutures are passed, and we will just have to tie the knots. So now we are tying the first knot using a, a very common sliding one and putting a lot of pressure in the tendon in order for that to heal in the bony bed that we had just created in the great tuberosity. Now we are cutting the first knot and tying the second and blue knot. So now we are tying the second knot and still putting a lot of pressure in the tendon as we see now. And once the knot was done, we would just have to cut it and now the knot has been cut. And this is the final image. This is the final result, a very healthy tendon. The lesion was absolutely fixed. The tendon looks good. And at that moment of the surgery, we even took a look in the muscle belly of the supraspinatus, as we are seeing now in the left part of the video. And the muscle belly is looking very fine. 
tendon looks very nice, and at that moment, uh, our surgery was then finished. So, my friends, I hope you liked the video. It shows a lot of good ideas in order for the surgeon to be able to remove the calcific deposits in the codman's area, in the subacromial space, using radioscopy and using not only standard portals, but also the posterolateral portal, which is something very interesting. I hope you liked it. Please don't forget to subscribe. Give us your like, leave your comment, this is very important for us. See you in the next video and as Dr. Sergio loves to say, never stop flying.